Okay, I'm, uh, here's my breast implant. I'm starting uh, this new thing called PenPoint, and I'm going to be just talking about whatever uh, pops into my head as it pops into my head. Autographed poster of Bob Dylan. Autographed to me. Pretty cool. This is a, a kind of a TV room where I watch with my family, and you notice that there's a lot of sock monkeys here. That's because I wrote a uh, novel called uh, Sock. So people send me all sorts of sock monkeys, <clears throat> which is why my next novel is going to be called uh, Fifty Thousand Dollars in Cash and a Blowjob. It's beautiful here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and what I'm going to be doing with these pen points is just walking down here all the time and talking about uh, whatever's on my mind. This is the uh, steam room. See what kind of echoes in there, and uh, here's where the uh, here's the guys that. Set it up, Tara. And uh, here's the uh, courtyard. And see, it's this opener. Oop, needs a code. Oh, don't look. And here we are. I've got the uh, cameras on, the monitors on, the microphone is on. Uh, get this camera going. There we go. Get this camera going. There we go. And we are ready to go. So this is uh, Pen Point, where uh, several times a week I'm going to be coming into my little uh, studio here, studio where I used to do my radio show. As you can see by the uh, table, there's a whole uh, layout of all my girly cards in acrylics right there. I'm going to come down here into the uh, studio where I used to do the uh, radio show and uh, where I uh, record music now and again. And I'm going to talk to you all for a little while about kind of whatever pops into my head. It's my show. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. And I'm going to be holding this camera here, and we got a camera over there, and a pretty nice uh, setup. And this pen point is going to be brought to you by um, Netflix. So um, this has been a while since this happened, but I still want to talk about it. I did Larry King, uh, Larry King Live, which I do pretty often. And Larry King is a liberal and I'm a libertarian, and we don't agree on very much, but Larry's always been nice to me and respectful. So we're backstage, and the woman from, um, from uh, what, The Hangover, is that what it was called? Uh, Rachel uh, was, uh, was, was on with us, and also um, Seth McFarlane, who's a great guy, and really funny and very sweet and very flattering. Uh, about everything, and I, you know, we, 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 we go on, well, we, we like each other, but we disagree about a lot of stuff. So I go out on to the, it's mostly uh, Seth MacFarlane's show on Larry King. We just brought it at the end. And for some reason, uh, Larry King throws, uh, throws out the Tea Party. The Tea Party movement, you gonna make fun of it yet? <laughs> uh, I, I, I think it kind of does that on its own. And I do not agree with the Tea Party. I mean, the Tea Party, as a rule, have crazy stuff like, you know, keep the government, I mean, the, the, the cliche, which I'm not sure anybody's even said, was, you know, keep the government hands off our Medicare and Medicaid. And I'm against Medicare and Medicaid. I'm a libertarian, I'm a small government guy. Uh, and also the Tea Party tends to be, and say they are, I mean, if you look at the Glenn Beck stuff, tends to be very, very Christian and religious, and, I, and I'm not that at all. So libertarians and uh, Tea Party people don't overlap all that much, we overlap a little bit. But Larry King and this woman, uh, Rachel and um, Seth, are really anti-Tea Party. I wouldn't say class, I do think it's more about racism as opposed to being a, a really political. Well, that's, that's the magic word. Once you say racism, the other side loses automatically. So I'm putting the position on Larry King of defending a movement that I don't agree with which is, I think, one of the greatest positions you can be in, and a position you should be in all the time. Like, I try really hard to defend the crazy Phelps, you know, the God hates fags Phelps guy. I defend him all the time. I defend the anti-abortion people all the time. I defend uh, religious people all the time, because you must defend people you don't agree with. It's where you find out what your principles really are. So I'm defending the Tea Party people. And first of all, this woman says that they're racists. And that drives me crazy 
because uh, if it's a racist organization, it says it's racist. If you say they're racist but they don't admit it, you are claiming to look into someone else's heart. And I believe claiming that is a wrong thing to do. There are racist organizations. We have racist organizations and they say they're racist. The idea of being an organization that is racist but doesn't say it. So how do you tell if an organization is racist? They say we are a racist organization. Doesn't it? I mean Aryan Nation does that. KKK does that. There are certain, uh, I think the Black Panthers did that, didn't they? Didn't they say that their stuff was racially motivated? But the Tea Party isn't saying that. So until they say it, they're not racial. And her argument for proving they were racist was that there was mostly white people in the organization. Uh, and I think saying that an organization with mostly white people are automatically racist is in itself kind of a racist thing, right? You're judging somebody by their race and not by who they are, what they do, and what they believe. But anyway, that's not what I want to talk about because that was just, I just argued with her. I just disagreed with her. But Seth MacFarlane made this argument that made me crazy and I didn't get to say enough about it on the air on Larry King's show, which is why I have PenPoint, so I can uh, talk about things I don't get to say enough in the other, other shows that I do. Seth MacFarlane is going to trash the Tea Party people. He's going to disagree with the Tea Party people. And the way he chooses to disagree with them is to say what makes them crazy, what proves to the him that they are puppets, and he uses the term puppets, that they're being pushed around by corporate people. The proof he has that they are puppets and not real thinkers and not a real movement is that they are pushing for things that are not in their own self-interest. They are not in their own self-interest because Seth MacFarlane believes that things like health care would certainly help the people who are in the Tea Party, but yet they are fighting against it, even though it's in their best interest, because Seth MacFarlane knows what's best for people in the Tea Party. He knows what they should be in favor of, and they are going against it, and therefore they are puppets. That's where he goes. Okay? Fine. That's his argument. And then Seth MacFarlane says, I don't remember word for word, you can look this up. Seth MacFarlane says, and what they're pushing for would be best for me. You know, I would get more money. I would pay less taxes. It's much better for me if the Tea Party gets what they want. What the fuck? What? Isn't he just making the argument that they are puppets because they are voting against their own self-interest? And I can say this because I'm willing to argue against my own self-interest? How does he get to, I mean, ah! If it's okay for him to argue against his own self-interest, why is it not okay for them to argue against their own self-interest? Why? Because they're poor? Is this like the noblest, noblest oblige, let me pronounce Like noblest oblige, that only the rich, powerful class are allowed to do things for other people? It is impossible that somebody who was poor could also have moral principles that are more important to them than just their pocketbook? That's not possible. It's only Seth MacFarlane that can possibly have some humanitarian morality in his soul. Anybody else that does that has to be a puppet? I mean, fuck you, Seth! And I love Seth, and he's really great, but I just don't know why other people aren't allowed to do something that, that Seth doesn't think is in their own self-interest. And oh, by the way, what Seth is, uh, is pushing for is in his own self-interest. What he wants to do is, even though he has a, whatever he has, $100 million, uh, maybe more, I don't know. I don't know what Seth has, but whatever he has, if he votes for health care, if he votes for government taking care of stuff, they can give much more money than he'd ever get for charity because then, even though he has a hundred million dollars in health care, he can handle a trillion dollars. And then he can look and not give money to charity because after all, he, I don't know if he does or not, he might give a lot of money to charity, but still, it gives him control 
by voting over more money than even he has. Even the $100 million is nothing compared to a trillion. And if you think $100 million is a lot compared to a trillion, look at the number of zeros. It's, it's insane. A hundred million is nothing compared to a trillion. And the reason I'm just saying things like uh, nothing and a lot and compared to is that I don't remember how many zeros on a trillion. But I think it's a thousand billion. Isn't a trillion a thousand billion? And a billion is a thousand million? So a hundred million means nothing. But really, really, Seth, babe, and I love you, and you're really funny, and I really like you, and I hope we hang out a lot more, and you're terrific. If you can do stuff that you say is against your best interest, so can poor people. And by poor people, compared to you, Seth, I mean almost everyone. This pen point has been brought to you by Netflix. Netflix delivers movies directly to your home, saving you time, money, and hassle. Watch as many movies as you want. Shipping is free. There are never any late fees or no due dates. Keep the movies as long as you like. DVDs by mail, plus instantly right to your TV. Get unlimited movies two ways for only $8.99 a month. But as a new member and a PenPoint viewer, you can get a free trial membership. And go check it out, man. I mean, go to the website, go to netflix.com slash pen. And tell it goes, uh, find a dandy pen in the helium voice, which is a great setup. This is the iPad. The problem is it kind of, sort of does too much. You invited a little person to a party that's going to have a chimpanzee. I thought you were circus, man.